All you got to do is go down Union Street with me in Wilmington and go to Katie's Restaurant or walk into Home Depot with me where I spend a lot of time. And you ask anybody in there whether or not the economic and foreign policy of this administration has made them better off in the last eight years. And then ask them whether there's a single major initiative that John McCain differs with the president on, on taxes, on Iraq, on Afghanistan, on the whole question of how to help education, on the dealing with health care. Look. The people in my neighborhood, they get it. They get it. And they know they've been getting the short end of the stick. So walk with me in my neighborhood. Go back to my old neighborhood in Claymont, an old steel town, or go up to Scranton with me. These people know the middle class has gotten the short end. The wealthy have done very well. Corporate America has been rewarded some time. We change it. Barack Obama will change it. Governor. I say it ain't so, Joe. There you go again, pointing backwards again, though. You prefaced your whole <laughs> comment with the Bush administration. Now, doggone it, let's look ahead and tell Americans what we have to plan to do for them in the future. That was a clip from one of the more memorable vice presidential debates in recent history between Joe Biden and Sarah Palin way back in 2008. With this year's vice presidential debate just over a day away, we thought tonight would be a great time to look back at the significance of VP debates from elections past. So joining me now is Dr. Larry Sabato, director, of, director at the University of Virginia Center for Politics, presidential historian Doug Weed, and Jonathan Darman, author of Landslide, LBJ and Ronald Reagan at the Dawn of a New America. Uh, so Larry, let me first start with you and thank you all for being with us. Uh, so that debate performance by Governor Palin, uh, there were two narratives. One was that she wasn't going to be able to uh, compete with somebody like Joe Biden, an experienced politician who had been around Washington for many years. But the reports afterwards were the fact that she didn't melt down. She actually did okay. And yet there were many people who thought she wasn't ready for prime time. Do you think that the addition of Sarah Palin to the McCain ticket doomed his bid for the White House? It had almost no impact whatsoever. And just about every study of the 2008 election has shown that the last vice president that mattered, Vlad, to the outcome of an election was Lyndon Johnson in 1960, okay? None of the other ones have made a difference electorally. Maybe they brought a state in, but uh, they didn't determine the winner of the election. And Sarah Palin uh, probably was more of a minus than a plus for John McCain, but she certainly wasn't the reason why John McCain lost. George W. Bush was in the 20s in job approval. The Iraq war was incredibly unpopular, and the American and world economies melted down at the end of September. That was all she wrote. Yeah, and Jonathan, you and I were talking about this before uh, we started uh, filming, that uh, how much of a towering figure Lyndon Johnson was back in, in, the, in the 60s. Obviously, there were no vice presidential debates back then, but we imagined a debate between Nixon's VP choice, which was, if I believe, Henry Cabot Lodge. That's it right. would have been, you know, the destruction, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think we were saying, you know, that would probably be one of the forgotten vice presidential <laughs> right. debates, uh, particularly because 1960, of course, was the year of the first, you know, major presidential televised debates between John F. Kennedy and Richard Nixon, which really created this whole template and have made this into an American institution. Mm. Uh, 